There's a very simple uh, response to this, and it's just... If you're a dinosaur of the Oracle industry like myself, this is a argument, battle, debate, discussion, insert <laughs> collaborative term here, that's aged for many, many years. The concept of gap-free sequences. So it is a bit of a broken record for us who are older in the, in the database industry, but the reality is this question came in and it's obviously someone who's perhaps fresh to Oracle. And so I thought it's worthwhile tackling because it would be remiss of me to sit there and say, well, just because I've used Oracle for way too many years, that everyone else should um, have the same experience as well. So here's the question that came in. We have a management requirement. It's always a management requirement, isn't it? We have a management requirement that all invoice numbers must be sequential and gaps must not be allowed. How can we ensure that sequences will fill this need? There's a very simple response to this and it's just don't. The moment you sit there and embark upon this crusade of having no gaps, generally the pain it's gonna cause you is gonna be far worse than any perceived benefits. And often I think the solution to this is a non-technical solution. The solution is a communication solution. It's often the case of getting some people in a room and exploring what is the deal? Why is there an issue with gaps? Sometimes it's an issue with the size of the gaps because sequences are cached and that's something that you can solve with pinning sequences. Sometimes it's just one of those things where, well, where our tech stack is replicating an old manual process where we had physically printed, for example, invoice numbers or something which has a unique number on it, and we want to replicate that. But if you can have a discussion with management, stakeholders, etc., about what the actual requirements is, often you can win them over and say, look, as long as it's unique, we're good. And probably the other one that comes in is people saying, well, we have an auditor that comes in and they're demanding to see evidence of why we have these gaps. And that's probably the, the, probably the only caveat is sometimes it's hard to convince an auditor that having literally gaps in numbers isn't really an indication that you've lost data. Um, one would imagine you have, no pun intended, all the checks and balances in place to say, well, I filled 10,000 invoices this year. I have 10,000 invoices in my table. Who cares what the numbers are? As long as the counts match up, surely we're good to go. If you need to preserve the order, as in when I get an invoice number, it has to be the first one, the next person gets the second one, et cetera, that pretty much is the death of any computer system in my opinion, because this is what happens. The moment someone can start an active transaction on your Oracle database and they get invoice number one, preserving order means no one else gets an invoice number. No one else can have number two because attractive transaction number one may fail. It may roll back, the database may crash, etc. You literally must wait for all subsequent activities until someone commits or rolls back transaction number one. So if you have to guarantee the preservation of order, then you've effectively reduced your system to a single user system. As much as I love using Oracle, I wouldn't use Oracle for a single user system. I'd just basically fire up an Excel spreadsheet, tell someone that locked the spreadsheet when you open it up, and that's how you allocate invoice numbers because literally that's the kind of performance you're going to get as well. You've literally turned your system into a one user system. If you can sacrifice order in the sense that someone might get invoice number four, someone else might get number seven, but someone else is destined going to get five and six, we're going to fill in all the gaps, just not necessarily in order, but we will ultimately get all the gaps filled, then that is something we can work with. You can't use an Oracle sequence for that because they're not designed in that way. But there are implementations, if you really have to go down this path, and I keep stressing, it's generally a bad idea. But let's look at a demo now to show how you could map, come up with what I call a compromise solution that's still relatively scalable. So if you need to implement gap-free sequences, using sequences isn't the way it's gonna work. You have to implement your own. So we're gonna do a little bit of code here, and this is something that you can simply literally take. I'll put this under my Office Hours scripts on the GitHub, and anyone can use this as they want. So I need a table of the different sequences I will have in my database. I've created a table called Seeks. I've made an organization index because I want this thing to be ultra lean to go retrieve from. I'll create five sequences. I've given them wonderfully meaningful names of sequence one through five. 
clearly in a real life situation, you would put whatever names mean make sense to you here. One would maybe one for invoices, maybe one for other purchase order numbers, etc. Whatever sequences you needed, but you still had to had to have this this what I call yucky gap free solution. The secret to having a scalable gap free solution is to pre allocate your sequence numbers. Now you might be thinking, well, that that's going to be incredibly costly, but Reality, you know, a, a number is typically a couple of bytes inside the Oracle database, internal, maybe three bytes. If you create a million invoice numbers in advance, you've just burned, what, four megabytes. That's not a problem. That's not even a flash drive nowadays. So what you want to do is we have this table now called sequence numbers, and there'll be effectively a range of numbers, as many as you require for each of the sequences you created in your seeks table. You can see this is also organization index and it refers back to the sequences table. So this is a child table. In this case, for each of my sequences, I'm gonna insert up to 1,000 pre-allocated numbers. So I'm running a very small business. I don't expect more than 1,000 invoices number this year, um, but that's an example. So you could literally create as many as you want. And if this is one of those things that needs to reset each year and those kind of requirements as well, then this is a mechanism by which you could do it. You simply reallocate the numbers at the start of each year, etc. So if we look at what's in our table now, our sequence numbers table, what we've got is all the pre-allocated sequence numbers for each sequence for the year, for the month, et cetera. And they all have a state. The state is, I'm free. I'm currently eligible for use. And this is the critical part because they're all pre-allocated. Now we'll be able to give them out to people in a nice, efficient manner. So the first thing we do is build a function that everyone's going to be able to call called get a sequence number. And this is where <laughs> the magic happens. We're going to take advantage of a similar pro internal facility that a advanced queuing uses. And advanced queuing is a similar concept. How do I farm out messages to people, making sure no one gets the same message? So what we're going to do is every time someone asks for a sequence, we're going to go get the sequence number for the given sequence name with the state equals free. We're going to lock that row and we're going to skip any other rows that are currently locked. And this is the key thing here. So we're going to walk down the list of available numbers where they're free, any, any numbers which have been used and committed will be have a different status. But anyone which is in an active transaction, they'll still have a status of free from this person's perspective, but they'll be locked. And we're gonna simply skip the locked ones. So we'll simply open that cursor, fetch the first available non-locked row, and then set its status to used. So it's fairly simple. Let's have a look at in action. I'm just using DBMS output here as a way of showing us retrieving a sequence number. So I do get, Get, the, get a value for sequence number one, and I get the value of one. And we can see inside our sequence numbers table, this is currently an active transaction. In my own session, it says the state is used. This um, has not yet been committed. And two, three, five, et cetera, are still free. If I ask for another sequence number, I get the value of two. And now one and two are used. If I ask for the sequence value of three, I get the, you can see how it's going here. I get one, two, and three are all used as well. Let's now simulate a different session asking for a sequence number. So in this case, I'll simply stay in the SQL plus session, but I'll use Pragma Autonomous Transaction. This is like another session asking for a sequence number, and they get sequence four. The reason for that is it said, I want to get one because it would still see one as being free because the other session has not committed, but that row is locked. So it skips one, skips two, skips three, ah, finds four, which is not locked, and locks it. In fact, you can see this session committed has changed. So sequence number four, sequence value four, will be used and committed as used. I've now rolled back my primary session, the one that picked out sequences one, two, and three. If we go look at our table, we can see the current state of play. One is free because we rolled back that transaction as is two and three. The autonomous session or Pragma Autonomous Transaction session, it did commit its transaction. So four has been used and is gone. You can see how we're going to fill in all the gaps, but we are sacrificing order here. That's pretty much the only way you can get a scalable gap-free solution. Once again, this session asks now for a sequence number, and we ask, he'll get number one, because it's the first available free that's not locked. And if we look, we can see now that what we've got is session one is used, but an active transaction. Session four is used and was committed. But there we go. That is a very scalable gap-free solution that as the sequence numbers go on, more often than not, we're going to get them in almost ascending order, and we're going to fill in any gaps as transactions roll back, etc. So it's close to a perfect implementation. 
even like this, it's nice and scalable, but it's not gonna be anywhere remotely near as scalable as using sequences. What we're doing is we are sacrificing order, but we're coming up with something which is a, an appropriate compromise. Um, and I'll put this code on my GitHub account and it's gonna be relatively scalable. If you do have a lot of concurrent sessions, then obviously the more hammering away at that indexed organized table of sequence numbers is going to create a contention point there. If that is the case, if you're at that level, I would probably, the first question I would ask is, if you're at that level, you probably really need sequences. But if you are at that level and can't use them, you probably want to do something like set a very high percent free that scatters that index organized table over a much larger range of blocks, therefore reducing the contention. Or for example, partition it either with a hash partition or you could, for example, partition it by sequence name, such that people only collide on certain sequences. Whatever the choices are, really, they're all examples of simply scattering the data further so it's not so many sessions competing for the same blocks. But reality, please have the discussion first with your business stakeholders. Like, just don't. If you can just go to sequences, especially now that we have identity columns in 12C and above, it's just like declare column identity, the job is done. There's no code, there's no contention, there's no worries, it's just works. Often gap-free sequences is a political discussion, not a technical discussion.